Order, please. Honorable Oshoba, please, can you occupy the chair of the chief whip? Honorable Oshoba. It could be permanent, who knows? Honorable members have examined and approved the votes and proceedings of Tuesday, 29th October 2029. We have some couple of announcements. The first one is um, in respect of some of our visitors. The first one is uh, the ambassador of Portugal and his deputy head of mission who are here to observe our proceedings. Please, can you rise for recognition? Please, can we appreciate them? You are welcome. Please uh, sit down. We also have in our midst today Students from Plateau State University, history and international students. They are also here to observe our uh, proceedings. Please can you uh, stand up for recognition. You are welcome. You may sit down, please. Honorable colleagues, I'm pleased to inform you that um, leadership has accepted to rename the House Committee, or to change the name of the House Committee on Niger Delta Ministry to House Committee on Regional Development, and this takes immediate effect. For our own information, please. The Leader of the House, please can you move for us to suspend our relevant rules to enable us admit into the chamber members of parliament from Uganda parliament to observe the plenary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Professor Julius Ihavire, Common Federal Constituency, Federal State. I rise to move that we suspend our rules to admit into the chamber's parliamentarians from Uganda. I so move. Minority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My dear colleagues, Kingsley Chinda, I rise to second the motion that we do suspend the relevant sections of our rules to allow for the entry into the chambers of our colleagues from outside the country. I so second. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. Um, Chair Rules, who will be the one to please bring them in? The Deputy Majority Leader, please kindly direct them in. The next announcement, uh, honorable colleagues, is in respect of um, our pre budget uh, oversight. Uh, in that regard, I wish to formally announce that the House will proceed on a one-week-long recess, commencing from Monday, November 4th to Monday, November 11th. This is to allow members to undertake critical oversights and inspections as prescribed by the Constitution and our standing orders. As we approach the close of the year, this period of oversight is essential for assessing the performance of ministries, departments, and agencies, ensuring accountability and efficiency within the public sector, and fulfilling our obligation to the Nigerian people. I therefore urge all members to approach this assignment with the seriousness it deserves. Furthermore, I call on all MDAs to extend their full cooperation, providing members with all necessary information and access to facilitate thorough and meaningful assessments. The House will resume sitting on Tuesday, November 12th at 11 a.m. Let us utilize this time, honorable colleagues, to enhance governance and uphold our oversight responsibilities.
the most important announcement of the, the day. Honorable colleagues, it's my pleasure to inform you the Honorable Dr. Sulema Abubakar Gumi has a very important message for all of us. And with your kind permission, I will read this later. He said, I write to inform you of my decision to decamp from the People's Party, People's Democratic Party, to the All Progressive Congress, APC, with immediate effect. Your Excellency, my decampment from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressive Congress was as a result of the lingering and unresolved internal and external crisis within the People's Demo uh, Democratic Party. It is noteworthy to state here that the People's Democratic Party have two chairmen in my constituency, Gwimi and Bukuyu Imperial constituency. One was unconstitutionally removed, while the other decamped with me. Hence, the party lacks structure in my constituency, and this has made it possible for me to provide good representation and prompt delivery of dividends of democracy to my constituents. It is in view of the foregoing that I'm officially informing you of my decampment from the Point People's Democratic Party to the All Point of Order. Party. Please accept Point the assurances of, of my highest esteem and regards. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Line, Honorable Dr. Suleyman Abu Bakar Gumi. Honorable Point. Gumi, can you stand up for recognition? Mr. Speaker, the Point of order. On the of the biggest and greatest party in Africa. Congratulations. Point of Welcome order, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, point of order. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. What point do you have, uh, the leader? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very grateful, my dear colleagues. Mr. Speaker, I rise under constitutional point of order, although threadbare, although you know why I am standing. But, Mr. Speaker, a time comes when you might want to be compelled to do the proper thing. Mr. Speaker, you sit here today as our leader, as the interpreter of the rules of the House and the Constitution, as far as we are concerned in these Green Chambers. Mr. Speaker, you are aware that for a member to leave his political party to another political party, the constitutional provisions are very, very clear. And the reasons given from what you have read is that he has two chairmen in his constituency. Mr. Speaker, the courts of this land, including the Supreme Court, has interpreted clearly what a division in a party is. And I will call you, sir, to act according to your oath of office would you swore, as Mr. Speaker, to uphold the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to carry out that assignment as the whole world is watching and listening to what position and decision you will take, sir? I would therefore urge you, Mr. Speaker, to act in line with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and declare the seat vacant. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, leader. Point of order, Your Mr. Speaker. Noted, I will reflect over. Point of order. Back to you. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Honorable Jimmy, I don't think if we need to waste uh, time on this, uh, the leader has made his uh, point. No. And uh, we reflect. Point of order on choice of words, sir. decide in the future what we need to do. Do you need to put a, uh, say anything more? Yes, sir. Point of order on choice of words, sir. Uh. It is, it I is remain... Not... I remain... <laughs> I remain... I remain... Mr. Speaker... Honorable colleagues... Privilege, privilege, Mr. Speaker. 
I remain in, I remain Baba Jimmy Benson. Order, please. Order, order. Representing the good people of the Korodu Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, choice of words. <laughs> Privilege. Order 6, Rule 9, Mr. Speaker. Mm -hmm. Order 6, Rule 9. It is protected by the chair. Please go on. And I quote, the majority leader used words, my minority leader used words that I think he should take back. Mm. He said to Mr. Speaker, that a time may come, that a time may come when you, Mr. Speaker, have to do the right thing. Honorable colleagues, our speaker does the right thing all the time. <laughs> Minority leader's position is succinct, but I think he should take that word back. No, I because think we can Mr. excuse Speaker. him under the circumstances. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, point of order, please. Who is raising the point of order? Honorable Mark Obeta. Okay, what is uh, the point of order, please? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Mark Obeta, member representing Onsuka Ibuiz, the south of Enugu State. Mr. Speaker, our other, book, other rule is here, and there is no order 6-9. There is no order 6 9 that uh, Honorable Jimmy Benson stood on. So he relied on an order that is not our order, order rule, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to call your attention to it so that you overrule whatever he has presented on the floor of this house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your point of order is noted. Thank you very much. Any member with petition? I will first of all recognize my dear friend, who is the chairman of Petition Movers, to open the floor. And I hope you have, you will have more than one, as yes. usual. Thank you, distinguished speaker, the people's speaker, and esteemed colleagues. My name is Barrister Jesse Okejo Onakalos. Mr. Speaker and distinguished colleagues, I represent the Nigerians especially the heartbeat of Lagos. Mr. Speaker, I have a petition here signed by Chief V.A. Agu of Emmanuel Solicitors. This petition is against the Nigerian police on inhuman treatment and unjust treatment to their client. Mr. Speaker, with a kind permission, the players are well enumerated here. With your kind permission, I seek, I crave your indulgence to lay this petition. Please go ahead. Any more petitions? Yes, that boy. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, my name is Honorable Abdullah Hibalara, with the boy representing Baku Red Angel Federal Constituency. I'm from Petana State. Mr. Speaker, I have a petition by one Dr. Williams, a JZ4, against Swiss Biostar Limited in respect of his unremitted pension benefits, which the company has refused to pay and remit to his pension fund administrators. I seek the leave of the House and the permission of the Speaker to lay in this petition, Mr. Speaker, sir. Please go ahead. Thank you. Yes, my dear brother. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable colleagues. I am Omori Osara Murphy, speaking for and on behalf of the entire people of Ego, Ikbubaka Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I'm from Edo State, the heartbeat of the nation. Mr. Speaker, I have a petition here from Honorable Michael Irom Etaba. This petition is against Dr. Suleiman Adejo, the managing director of Kino Smart Parking Nigeria Limited. 
and the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Federal Capital Territory, named Mr. Dogo Aliu Wadatab. This petition is for corruption, tax evasion, bribery, non remittance of accrued revenue to the government coffers, and failure to pay this type of key no smart parking Nigeria Limited, their salaries and entitlements. Mr. Speaker, with your permission, I wish to step forward to lay this petition. Please go ahead. Any more petitions? Honorable Matthew. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Honorable Mark Obeta, representing the good people of Onsuka, Igbezi South, Federal Constituency of Enugu State. Mr. Speaker, I have a petition from Bottlewood and Green, legal practitioners, solicitors, consultants, and arbitrators. It's a petition against Standard Alliance Insurance Company, PLC, and Standard Alliance Life Assurance and its directors. This petition was signed by Samson Isechi, the principal partner. With the leave of the House and your kind permission, may I uh, present this petition, sir? Please go ahead. Any more petitions? All petitions are referred to the Committee on Public Petitions for further legislative action. Before we proceed into the next uh, item, it's my pleasure to recognize the presence of Honorable Dr. Ryonka Joseph, who is the committee chairman from the Ugandan Parliament. And we also have Honorable Dr. Akut Opio Samuel, who is his deputy chairman. And again, we have Honorable Dr. Boka Didi George, who is a committee member. Uh, accompanying them, um, Dr. Ibrahim Wada, OON, from NISA Premier, and Barista Udinga Imupere, and Barista Halita Adekule. You are most welcome. Honorable colleagues, we are on matters of public urgent uh, importance. It is my pleasure to recognize Honorable Shesi Oluasium Wingam to move his motion. Honorable Wingam. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, my colleagues, I rise today to um, move a motion of matter, uh, uh, urgent public importance on um, the urgent need to, for precautionary measures to mitigate predicted flood risk in 22 states and FCT. My name is Honorable Wingan Sesi Oluwashion, and I represent the people of Badagri, Federal Constituency, and from Lagos State. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My highly respected colleagues, Bada Ahmed Yusuf is my name, member representing Shannon of Oga Federal Constituency, Mr. Speaker. I stand on the motion heavily raised my honorable colleague. I so stand. Thank you. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. The second leg of the motion, any second? Yes, honorable. Is it my chair? Please go ahead. Thank you, Your Excellency. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, Nam Dezich is my name and I represent Ndokwa Kwan Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I rise this morning to second this uh, motion of urgent public importance that the motion is urgent enough to be had in the floor of the House. I so second, Mr. Speaker. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. Honorable Sese, please proceed. Thank you, sir. Um, the House notes that the federal government has predicted five days of heavy rainfall, which may lead to flooding in 22 states and the federal capital territory, according to a report from the National Flood Early Warning System Center of the Federal Ministry of Environment, published by Punch Nigeria on October 14, 2024. Also notes that the identified locations most at risk of severe flooding include communities along the flood plains of rivers Donga, Benue, 
and Ogun in states such as Oshu, Delta, Cross River, Anambra, Taraba, Nasarawa, and, Keb and Kebi, among others. The rainfall and potential flooding are predicted from the 14th of to 18th of October 2024, threatening both life and property. The House is concerned that the predicted heavy rainfall and resulting floods could have devastating impacts on vulnerable communities, leading to displacement, loss of property, destruction of infrastructure, and potential loss of lives if adequate precautionary me mechanisms are not put in place to protect citizens in these areas. The House further concerned that despite early warnings, there may not be sufficient proactive measures such as timely evacuations, provisions of temporary shelters, and support system for affected communities. This increases the risk of severe humanitarian consequences if these warnings are not addressed through urgent actions. The House is aware that the flooding is a rec recurring issue in Nigeria, often exacerbated by inadequate drainage system, lack of preparedness, and insufficient coordination among agencies responsible for disaster management. It is crucial that relevant authorities immediately implement strategies to mitigate the predicted disaster, including evacuation plans, provision of relief materials, and ensuring post-flood recovery efforts are coordinated effectively. The House resolves to, one, summon the Federal Ministry of Environment, the National Emergency Management Agency, and the Hydrological Services Agency to appear before this Honorable House to explain what precautionary measures are being implemented to safeguard lives and properties in the predicted flood zones. Call on the Federal Ministry of Environment and State Government to activate evacuation protocols for communities along flood plains and ensure that affected populations have access to temporary shelters, medical services, and other forms of support. Three, the House urged the Federal Government, the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, and the Ministry of Water Resources to carry out an immediate assessment of drainage, drainage system and waterways in flood-prone areas and work reduce blockages that could worsen flooding. Direct that the federal government through the relevant ministries and agencies to collaborate with the state government to enhance their disaster preparedness capabilities and also, also ensure the quick deployment of rescue teams and relief materials and medical assistance where needed. And lastly, the House mandates the Committee on Environment jointly with Committee on Emergency and Disaster Preparedness and Water Resources to ensure ongoing monitoring and post-flood rehabilitation efforts, ensuring that affected communities receive long-term support in rebuilding infrastructure and livelihood. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Amendment? Yes, Honorable uh, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. Francis A. Girogane Wives by name, and I represent the entire people of Ugele North, Ugele South, and Udu, and from Delta State. My amendment is to prayer one, where he is urging that the ministers would appear before the House. I would want to amend that to say that uh, they should be summoned to the committees, the committees of environment and um, water resources as mentioned in the other prayers of the motion. I so move for its amendment. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Any second to this amendment? Yes, Doctor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, my honorable colleague. I agree with this amendment. It's therefore my pleasure to second the amendment as moved by my honorable colleague. I so second, sir. 
Those in favor of this amendment should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. Any second to the main motion? Yes, Honorable uh, Idem. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues. My name is Idem Unyime, member representing Ukanafun, or Ukanafun Federal Constituency of Akwaibom State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the motion as amended. I so second. Those in support of this motion as amended, she say aye. Those against, she say nay. That is of it. This motion is referred to the committees on environment, emergency and preparedness, water resources and finance for further legislative action. The next motion is coming from Honorable Oboku Abonisibe Oforji. Honorable Oforji, if you are around, please can you rise and move your motion. With profound humility, Mr. Speaker, my revered colleague, Oforji Abonisibe Oboku is my name, representing Inigwa Kolokuma Opokuma Fera constituency. I am from Bayelsa State. Mr. Speaker, I rise this morning to move a motion of urgent public importance on the need to appeal to Mr. President to rescind the scrubbing of the Ministry of Niger Delta Development. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Any second to the first leg? Yes, Honorable Mohammed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Distinguished, highly respected, my colleague. My name is Honorable Mohammed Ang Abbashehu, member representing good people of Zaki Federal Constituency. I'm from Bochi State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the motion, heavily moved by my colleague, that the matter is urgent enough to be presented. Thank you. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. The second leg of the motion. Second leg, who is uh, seconding? Honorable Chair, please go ahead. I thought I saw your hand. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, my name is Right Honorable Engineer Hamis Ibrahim. I represent Number Tamakota Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I am from Kano State. Mr. Speaker, I stand to second the second leg of the motion heavily moved by my colleague. I so second. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. Honorable, please proceed. The Right Honorable Mr. Speaker, my revered colleagues, Ofoji Abonsis Boboku is my name, representing Yenegua Kolokuma Upokuma Federal Constituency. I am from Bayelsa State. Mr. Speaker, the House note that the Ministry of Niger Delta Development, formerly Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs, was announced on September 10. 2008 by late President Umaru Musa Yaradua of blessed memory. Ufot Ekaite was appointed the minister of the ministry in December the same year. They also note that the ministry was created to promote and coordinate policies for the development, peace, unity, and security of the Niger Delta region. It is expected to formulate, execute plans program and other initiatives, as well as coordinate the activities of the agency, communities, donors, and other relevant stakeholders involved in the development of the Niger Delta region. The House is aware that President Yaradua of blessed memory had good intention and foresight for creating the ministry. To him, it was a way to ameliorate the suffering agitation and neglect of the region for decades by successive governments. 
a region that produces the economic wealth of the country, and yet poor and poorly governed. They are also aware that years of oil spillage, lack of arable land, and total amenities, etc., have necessitated the emergence of militancy in the oil rich region. It was in the short term of late President Yaradua of leadership from late President Yaradua leadership from Kasina State that the dialogue was initiated with major stakeholders in the region and militants, militants culminating in the amnesty program that has brought relative peace to the oil rich Niger Delta region. Yes, further where that these were prelude to the creation of the ministry, which was aimed at infrastructural development, environmental protection, and employment of youth in the oil rich Niger Delta region. Are we there yet? The answer is no. But the people of the Niger Delta believe that the lofty dreams and aspirations of the founding fathers of the region will be actualized some days. Yes their embrace of the creation of the Ministry of the Niger Delta. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the region is disturbed that on the 23rd of October 2024, the oil-rich region witnessed a palpable tension following the announcement of the scrubbing of the Ministry of Niger Delta Development by President Bola Ahmed Tinimu. This is not a good omen for a region that has Leader. Immensely Money. to the economic development of our country and has enjoyed some relative peace. The House resolve urge the federal government, led by President Bolame Tinibu, to urgently resent the scrapping of the Ministry of the Niger Delta. Mr. Speaker, my respected. Mr. Speaker, uh, Julius Ihonveri, on our federal constituency at the state. Uh, I think the intention of the motion mover is a good one. It shows uh, patriotism and commitment to the interests of the Niger Delta. However, I think it is a bit preemptive and at the same time assumptive because uh, the interests of the Niger Delta is already being pursued in ways that will balance the other regions. We have a South-South Development Commission bill which has passed the House completely. It's in the Senate and we're following up to clear some of the cobwebs at that end. And I believe that uh, uh, with that bill uh, the South-South Development Commission will be added to the Ministry of Regional Development to balance all other regions. So my view is that at this point in time we will urge my brother, my younger brother, a member, to step down the bill for further legislative consultation between this side and that side and our stakeholders. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Leader. Well, for the information of the House, I had a discussion with Mr. President last week concerning the issue of South-South Development Bill, and he told me clearly that he is favorably disposed to receiving any proposal concerning the establishment of South-South Development Commission. So I think in light of this explanation, I would want to call on uh, the sponsor of this motion to please allow us to step down this uh, motion, since it is overtaken by events. With Honorable Oforji. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Are we on the same page with you? Uh, no problem, sir. Mr. Speaker, please. Thank you so much, Honorable. Uh, thank this, you, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Thank you. This uh, motion is set down by the leave of the House. The next uh, motion is coming from Honorable Dr. Suleyman Abubakar Gumi. If he's around, please can you rise and move your motion? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues. I am Dr. Suleiman Abakar Gumi. I represent the good people of Gumi Bukwim Federal Constituency from Zamfara State, the newest member of APC. Uh, this motion is brought under urgent, important order, under eight, order eight, rule four. I want to seek order eight, rule four. 
rule five, or, or the eight rule five. And I want the leave of the house to allow me to take this all important motion, which is the need to stop the issuance of S strip license to private individuals and organizations in the country as a matter of national security concern. I Two speakers are very distinguished colleagues. I remain honorable chair with to member representing Pascali Kankara Sawa and from Kasana State. I rise to second the motion, first leg of the motion, ably moved by my brother, Honorable Sleban Gumi, the brand new APC member. I so order, please. second order, Mr. Order, Speaker. Order, please. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Point of order. Those uh, against should say nay. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. The eyes of it. Point Mr. of order? Yes, sir. Okay, please go ahead. Mr. Speaker, my very dear colleagues, I rise on the same order, 8 through 5. Particularly, sub rule 2 and I wish to read. A matter of urgent public importance shall, emphasis on the word shall, seek to address any of the following. Immediate threats to lives and properties. If the matter is allowed to persist and not addressed immediately, it may lead to breakdown of law and order, cause serious damage to or total destruction of federal government owned or controlled infrastructure, a national monument or a World Heritage Center. Three, any matter considered to be urgent by the speaker. Mr. Speaker, the issues raised, any other matter considered by the speaker. I'm not shying away from that. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, the, the issue raised by our colleague is very germane. It's necessary, it's important. But the other question is, is it urgent as to come under order eight rule five. And I think that we actually need to consider this issue so that we take only matters that are urgent and in compliance with our rules under this order. We have motion on notice. We have other means of bringing these matters before the parliament. But we observe that we are overloading order eight rule five. I would therefore pray that my learned colleague should put us on notice so that we will also have the opportunity of reading through his arguments and then prepare ourselves to respond to this motion. This motion does not fall under that order, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you, leader. But uh, when you look at the number three of what you have read, it gives the speaker the latitude. And I'm sure we have been taking similar kind of uh, motions in the past that are not too urgent, but uh, with the discretion of the speaker, once in a while we do that. And I think today, <clears throat> because it's a very symbolic day for us, I would want to graciously, uh, graciously accept that. And I know why the leader is not too happy for this uh, motion to uh, take place. So please, uh, you're not, uh, your, 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 your point of order is noted, but uh, we'll go ahead and put the second question. Depending on the outcome, we'll decide whether we take it immediately or take it the, uh, tomorrow, okay? So those is, uh, any second to the second motion? Honorable Lamborura. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my respected colleagues. I am Honorable Bell Isa Amborura, representing Guadabawa Ilela Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I rise up to second the motion that was presented by my colleagues that uh, under Rule 8, rule, uh, under 8, Rule 5, to present the motion under urgent public importance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Okwara. Those against should say nay. Yeah. The ayes have it. Honorable, <laughs> please proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for your protection. Um, aware, 
that the federal government, through the Minister of Aviation and Aerospace, Festus Keamo, confirmed the approval of an airstrip for a religious-based organization in Ota Ogun State. Recall that in September 2014, a prominent religious leader was linked with a private jet used to convey $9.3 million in cash to South Africa for purchase of arms. The private jet was seized by the South African authorities, uh, which has two, two people, Nigerian and an Israeli, on board. Concerned that currently experienced, uh, the current uh, experience of uh, security challenge that Nigeria is facing through illegal importation, proliferation of firearms and ammunition, importation of illicit hard drugs, coupled with the inability of our security agencies to pinpoint the source of supply of weapons to insurgents, kidnappers, and separatists that have massacred thousands of Nigerians across the country. Worried that granting airstrip to private individuals and organizations would aid illegal importation of firearms and hard drugs into the country, thus heightening insurgency, kidnapping, banditry, and other vices that are seriously affecting the socio-economic development of, of the country. The House resolves to, one, call on the Ministry of Aviation and Aerospace to stop issuance of airstrip licenses to private individuals and organizations, and also withdraw approvals already granted to private individuals and organizations with a view to safeguarding national security. Two, urge the committees on aviation and legislative compliance to ensure compliance. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Any seconder? Observation, Mr. Observation? Speaker. Yes, sir. Uh, please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and distinguished colleagues. My name is Honorable Shino Ereji. Um, I represent the people of Isai, Tesewaju, Kajola, and the Wajo of Federal Constituency. Um, observation is this. Um, I believe initially the minister was even wrong in giving an approval for an airstrip. This is supposed to be the duty of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. So we need to even look, it, look at it from that angle. The approval given by the minister is even defective and is not meant to be. Because the approval for airstrip airport is supposed to come from Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, who is domiciled with the power to do so. It's not domiciled at the ministry. It is after the approval of it is after the approval of the NCAA that the minister can give such an approval. So even giving that kind of approval is, a, is an abuse of power. So I want this house to please see how we can actually look at all this. There are so many things going on in the ministry, in the, I mean, that industry right now that we really need to look into. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I... Well, I accept your contribution, but we also need to be mindful that um, the Nigeria Civil Aviation uh, Authority is under the Ministry of uh, Aviation. So by implication, we, I want to believe perhaps the minister has uh, done the due diligence by accepting all the, I mean, collecting all the necessary approvals before he made the announcement. But however, since the resolution of this motion, or the prayer, is to order the Committee on Aviation to investigate on this matter, I think uh, they can also take note of that particular aspect to ensure that in the first place, whether due process has been followed or not. So I think we can take a seconder to the motion, or have we done so? Honorable uh, Namdi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Excellency, Honorable Nam Desich is my name, and I represent Ndokwa, Okwa and Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I'm from Delta State. I rise here this morning to second the motion, ably moved by my dear former brother from PDP. I so second. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. The eyes have it. This motion is referred to the Committee on uh, Aviation for Further Legislative Action. Honorable members, the business of the day is presentation of 20 bills. I now invite the clerk to read their short titles. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members. 
Federal Colleges of Education Act Amendment Bill 2024, first reading. Federal Medical Centers Act Amendment Bill 2024, first reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, six alteration, FCT House Assembly Bill 2024, first reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, six alteration, Multiplayer Policing Bill 2024, first reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, six alteration, Compensation in the Land Use Act Bill 2024, first reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, six alteration, Bill Sixth Special Seat for Special Interest Group Bill 2024, first reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1996, alteration, expand criminal categories bill, 2024, first reading. Compulsory genotype screening bill, 2024, first reading. Federal College of Nursing and Midwifery, Is Isioko River State Establishment Bill, 2024, first reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1996, alteration bill, 2024, first reading. Electoral Act Amendment Bill, 2024, first reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1996, Alteration Bill 2024, First Reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1996, Alteration Bill 2024, First Reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1996, Alteration Bill 2024, First Reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1996, Alteration Bill 2024, First Reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1996, Alteration Bill 2024, First Reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1996, Alteration Bill 2024, First Reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1996, Alteration Bill 2024, First Reading. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1996, Alteration Bill 2024, First Reading. Federal Medical Centers are Amendment Bill 2024, First Reading. Honorable colleagues, the fourth order of the day is the third reading of a bill for an act to prevent, prohibit, and redress sexual harassment of students in tertiary educational institutions and for related matters, standing in the name of uh, the House Leader. Honorable members recall that the House adopted the report of the Committee of the Whole on the bill on Tuesday, 29th October 2024. I therefore call on the House Leader to move that the bill be read the third time. Mr. Speaker, Professor Julius Yonveri, on one federal constituency and from Edo State, I rise to move that a bill for an act to prevent, prohibit, and redress sexual harassment of students in tertiary educational institutions and for related matters, HB 1598 and a bill for an act to amend the Federal Medical Centers Act and establish Federal Medical Center in Tigiri, Cross River State, and for related matters, HB 624, and a bill for an act to provide for, establishment, for the establishment of Federal College of Health Sciences, Gaya, Kano State, and for related matters, HB 31, and a bill for an act to amend the Federal Medical Centers Act and establish Federal Medical Center Ikole Ekiti, Ekiti State of Related Matters, HB 1037. And finally, a bill for an act to amend the Agricultural Research Council Act, CAP A, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2024, to make provisions for the establishment of Federal College of Agriculture technology to contribute to the development of Nigeria through training of qualitative manpower in agriculture by adequate exposure to sound theoretical background, practical farm and field demonstrations, and for related matters, SB 212 be read for the third time. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Minority Leader, please second the first order of the day, which is a third reading, second order of the day, which is also a third reading, and the third order of the day, also a third reading. I think the House Leader took all the three together.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues. I rise to second the motion for the third reading of the following bills, HB 1598, HB 642, Therefore, anyway, with the fourth order to as well, please. HB 31, and HB 1037. I so second. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. Clark. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members. A bill for an act to prevent, prohibit, and redress sexual harassment of students in tertiary educational institutions and for related matters. Third reading. A bill for an act to amend the Federal Medical Centers and an established Federal Medical Center, Itigidi, Cross River State, and for related matters. Third reading. A bill for an act to provide for establishment of Federal College of Health Sciences, Gaya, Kano State, and for related matters. Third reading. A bill for an act to amend the Federal Medical Centers and an established Federal Medical Center, Ikole Ekiti, Ekiti State, and for related matters. Third reading. Bills read for the third time and passed. The fifth order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principles of a bill for an act to amend the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria Act, Cap A, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2024, to make provisions for establishment of Federal College of Agricultural, Techno uh, Agricultural Technology, Opialum, Ojapo, Benue State, to contribute to the development of Nigeria through training of qualitative manpower in agriculture by adequate exposure to sound theoretical background, practical farm and field demonstration, and for related matters, standing in the name of uh, the House Leader. Honorable members will recall that the bill was transmitted by the Senate seeking concurrence of the House of Representatives. The bill was read the first time on Tuesday, 15th October 2024. I now invite Honorable um, Inhofeiri, the House Leader, to move that the bill be read a second time. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much for amending my earlier presentation. I rise to move that the bill for an act to amend the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria Act Cap A, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2024, to make provisions for the establishment of Federal College of Agricultural Technology, Opialu, Ojapo, Benue State, to contribute to the development of Nigeria through training of qualitative manpower in agriculture by adequate exposure to sound theoretical background, practical farming, and field demonstration of related matters, SB 212 be read a second time. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Minority Leader, please can you second. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, I rise to second the motion for the second reading of SB 212. I so second. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. This is a straightforward uh, bill. It's an establishment bill, so we'll just go ahead and put the question. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those uh, against should say nay. That is of it. Clark. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members. A bill for an act to amend the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria Act Cap A, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2024, to make provisions for establishment of Federal College of Agricultural Te Technology, Opialu, Ojapo, Benue State, contribute to the development of Nigeria through training of qualitative manpower in agriculture by adequate exposure to sound theoretical background, practical farm, and field demonstration, and for related matters. Second reading. Bill referred to the Committee of the Hall for further legislative action. The sixth order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principles of a bill for an act to alter the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, to carve out Nasarawa Egon Federal Constituency from Akwanga slash Nasarawa Egon won by Federal Constituency and for related matters. Standing in the name of Honorable Jeremiah Umaru. Honorable members will recall that the bill was read the first time on Tuesday, 7th May 2024. I now invite Honorable Umaru to move that the bill be read a second time. 
Thank you, Excellency, the right honorable speaker, my respected colleagues. My name is Jeremiah Umuru Isi. I represent Akwanga Nasarawa Egowamba Federal Constituency. I'm from Nasarawa State. I stand to move that a bill for an act to alter the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, to carve out Nasarawa Egon Federal Constituency from Akwanga Nasarawa Egowamba Federal Constituency and other related matters be read for the second time. I so move, Mr. Speaker, sir. Thank you. Any seconder? The chairman of the Committee of Deputies, Honorable Leko. Thank you, Your Excellency, Right Honorable Speaker, my dear respected colleagues. My name is Honorable Jafar Leko. And I continue to represent the very good people of Bogoro, Dastafa, Balewa. I stand before you this afternoon to second this uh, very, very important motion uh, sponsored by uh, a bill sponsored by a friend and a colleague, Honorable Jeremia Umaru, to alter the Constitution of Federal Republic of uh, Nigeria to create uh, Nasara Egon Federal Constituency out of Wamba Akwanga Nasara Egon Federal Constituency. I saw second, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. Thank you. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. Again, this motion is a straightforward one. It's a constitutional matter, so with your kind permission, we go ahead and put the question. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. Clerk. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members. A bill for an act to alter the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 to carve out Nasarawa Egon Federal Constituency from Akwanga Nasarawa Egon Wamba Federal Constituency and for related matters. Second reading. The seventh order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principles of a bill for an act to amend Federal Medical Centers Act and establish Federal Medical Center Saiki Oyo State for the provision of tertiary health care services, medical education, and for related matters. Standing in the name of Honorable Karim Tajuddin Abis Abisodun. Honorable members will recall that the bill was read the first time on Wednesday. 17 July 2024, and I invite Honorable Tajuddin to move that the bill be now read a second time. Thank you very much, my boss, the speaker, <laughs> colleagues. I am the Honorable Karim Tajuddin Abisodu. Honorable speaker, I represent the people of Shaki West, Shaki East, and Atisbo Federal Constituency of Oyo State. Honorable Speaker, may I move, and I so move, for a bill for an act to amend the Federal Medical Center Act and establishment Federal Medical Center, Shaki, Oyo State, for the provision of tertiary health care services medical education, and for related matters, HB 1356. Honorable Speaker, I so move. Any seconder? Honorable Akiremi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, my name is Honorable Prince Hakim Adini Yadiemi. Mr. Speaker, I'm speaking for the good people of Asidio Atiba, Oyoi Sayo West, and rise to second the motion to go for a second reading of a bit to establish medical center in Atisbo, Shaki, Federal Constitution for your state. I so move. I so second. Aquara. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is our it. Again, this is an establishment bill. We don't need to debate over it. Could be done during public hearing. So with your kind permission, we put the question. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. 
Clerk, right honorable speaker, honorable members, a bill for an act to amend Federal Medical Centers Act and establish Federal Medical Center, Shaki, Oyo State, and for the provision of tertiary health care services, medical education, and for related matters. Second reading. Bill referred to the Committee on Health Institutions for further legislative action. The eighth order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principles of a bill for an act to amend Federal University of Agriculture Act Cap F22 laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2010 to establish Federal University of Agriculture Akure on those state and for related matters. Standing in the name of Honorable Ajeshita Abiodun. Honorable members will recall that the bill was read the first time on Thursday, 9th May 2024. And I invite Honorable Adeshida to move that the bill be read a second time. Honorable, please go ahead. The right honorable speaker, honorable colleagues, my name is Honorable Prince Abia Dundiri Adeshida. I represent Akure North, Akure South Federal Constituency of Ondo State. I stand before you to move for a bill for an act to amend the Federal Universities of Agriculture Act Cap F22 laws of the Fed Federation of Nigeria 204 to establish Federal University of Agriculture Akure Ondo State and for related matters HB 1375 to be read the second time. I so move. Any seconder? Any seconder? Honorable Jesse. Thank you, the people speaker, esteemed colleagues. My name is Barrister Jesse Okejo Onakalos. I represent the Nigerians, especially the habit of Lagos. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second uh, a move a bit to amend the Federal University of Agriculture for the establishment of Federal Agriculture at Kure to pass the second reading as so second. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. Honorable colleagues, again, this is an establishment bill. With your kind permission, I'll go ahead and put the question. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. Clark. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members. A bill for an act to amend the Federal Universities of Agriculture Act of F-22 laws of the Federal Honorable Act of 2004 to establish Federal University of Agriculture Akure on those state and for related matters. Second reading. Bill referred to the Committee on Ag Agricultural Institutions and Colleges for further legislative action. The ninth Papara order is of the permission. day is commencement of debate on the general principles of a bill for an act to amend the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria Act Cap A12, laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, to make provision for establishment of Federal College of Agriculture in Bati. Buruku Benue State and for related matters. Standing in the name of Honorable Seka Zuam Yotom. Honorable members will recall that the bill was read the first time on Wednesday, 10th October 2023. I now invite Honorable Yotom to move that the bill be read the second time. Mr. Speaker, Honorable colleagues, my name is Sekav Zwayotyong, member representing the good people of Buruku Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I rise this afternoon to move a bill for an act to amend the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria Act, Cap A. 12, laws of the, Federal, the Federation of Nigeria, 2024, to make provision 
for the establishment of Federal College of Agriculture, Mbaitie, Buruku, Benue State, and, and for the Federal Metals, HB 572. Mr. Speaker, I move that this bill should be read for the second time. I so move. Honorable Billy. Thank you, my right honorable speaker. My honorable colleagues, I remain honorable Chief Dr. Billy Famous Adesua Osawaru. I represent the good people of Orion One Holder Federal Constituency of Edo State, a very proud Benin Chief. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second this motion, ably moved by my colleague, Honorable Seka. I so second, Mr. Speaker. Those in support of this motion, she say aye. Those against, she say nay. That is of it. Clark, can you read the long title? The right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members. A bill for an act to amend the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria, Act Cap 812, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, to make provision for establishment of Federal College of Agriculture, Mbati, Buruku, Benue State, and for related matters, second reading. Bill referred to the Committee on Agricultural Institutions and Colleges for further legislative action. The tenth order of the day is a motion on rescission of the Federal University of Agriculture Kabam Establishment Bill 2024, standing in the name of Honorable Francis Waebe. Honorable Waebe is thereby invited to move the motion. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Francis A. G. Rogane Waebe is my name, and I represent the entire people of Ugele North, Ugele South, and Udu, I'm from Delta State. I rise to move the motion for the rescission of the Federal University of Agriculture, CABA, Establishment Bill 2024, HB 1520. The House knows that a bill for an act to establish Federal University of Agriculture, CABA, was considered, subsequently read the third time and passed. Aware of the existence of the Federal Universities of Agriculture Act, and therefore introducing an establishment bill may not be ideal in the circumstances, but rather an amendment to the existing act on Federal Universities of Agriculture Act. The House therefore resolves to rescind its decision on the passage of the Federal University of Agriculture by Establishment Bill HB 1520 and recommit the bill to the Committee of the Whole for reconsideration. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Minority Leader. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, I rise to second the motion as moved by the House uh, Chairman, Business and Rules. I so second. Those in support of this motion, she say aye. Those against, she say nay. That is of it. Clark? Sorry. Motion is referred to the Committee of the Hall for further legislative action. The 11th order of the day is a motion on outstanding bills from preceding assembly, standing in the name of uh, Honorable Francis Waebe. Honorable Waebe is hereby invited to move the motion. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Francis A. Girogane Waebe is my name, and I represent the entire people of Ugele North, Ugele South, and Udu. I am from Delta State. I rise to move the motion for reconsideration of outstanding bills from preceding assembly. The House notes that National Broadcasting Commission Act Amendment Bill 2024, HB 1816, and Federal University Wukuru Establishment Bill 2024, HB 1382. The House notes that pursuant to Order 12 Root 17 of the Standing Orders, the House may, upon being regazetted or circulated, reconsider the committee of the, in the Committee of the Whole without commencing the novel, the bills, whose report were pre was presented by the committee before consideration 
passed by the House and forwarded to the Senate for concurrence, for which no concurrence was made or negative, passed by the Senate and forwarded to the House, for which no concurrence was made or negative, or passed by the preceding assembly and forwarded to the president for assent, but for which assent or withholding thereof was not communi communicated before the end of the term of the preceding assembly. The House also notes that affirmation bills were passed by the preceding assembly and forwarded to the president for assent, but for which assent or withholding thereof was not communicated before the end of the term of the last assembly. Aware that the bills were read for the first time as HB 1816 and 1382, the House resolves to recommit the bills to the Committee of the Whole for consideration. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Kelechi. The right Honorable Speaker, most respected and humble Speaker of this Parliament. My name is Honorable Kelechi Mugu. I represent the people of Eche Omuma constituency. I'm from River State, the treasure base of the nation. I rise to second the motion moved by my colleague. I so second. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is our date. This motion is referred to the Committee of the Hall for further legislative action. The 12th order of the day is a motion on the need to address flooding and gully erosion, devastating communities in building KB, Calgo, Bunza, Federal Constituency. Standing in the name of Honorable Ibrahim Mohammed. Honorable Mohammed is hereby invited to move the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, Ibrahim Mohammed, I represent Nigerians through the good people of Bini, Kebi, Kogo, Bunza, Federal Constituency. I am from Kebi State. I rise to move a motion on the need to address flooding and gully erosion devastating communities in Bini, Kebi, Kogo, Bunza, Federal Constituency. The House notes the growing impact of climate change, which has adversely affected and impacted environments across the globe, resulting in environmental and socioeconomic challenges. Also notes that flooding and gully erosion are exacerbated by increased rainfall, poor environmental practices, inadequate or inefficient drainage systems due to lack of preparedness by relevant government agencies to respond to climate change projections and poor waste disposal practices. Concerned that communities within Beninkebi Kolgo Bonza Federal Constituency, including Bonza Marafa, Nasarawa 1 and 2, Digi, Kola, Tarasa, Badaria, Zauro, Ambursa, Raha, Bunza, Dangala, Edima, Medehini, and Sabombirni have been severely impacted by recurring floods and expanding gully erosion annually, leading to the loss of valuable farmlands that are crucial for agriculture and the local economy. Also concerned that the floods and erosion have caused displacement of families and trauma in affected communities, leading to socioeconomic disruption. Aware that the communities are currently grappling with economic challenges due to the loss of essential services, lack of government intervention, infrastructural destruction, and impended transportation of goods exacerbating the crisis. Also aware that these communities are predominantly agrarian, experiencing ongoing losses due to the inability to transport produce, coupled with the growing encroachment of gully erosion on their farmlands, which threatens future livelihoods. Cognizant of the need to address the gully erosion to alleviate residents' suffering, reclaim productive farmland, boost economic activities, and restore the residents' confidence in government and environmental protection. The House resolves to urge the Ecological Fund Office and other related agencies to conduct an impact assessment of the affected communities and provide necessary funding for a robust remediation plan to mitigate the effects of flood and gully erosion. Two, also urge the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to immediately provide relief materials to the affected communities in Binikebi, Kogo, and Bunza Federal Constituents. Lastly, mandate the Committees on Environment, Works, and Water Resources to make adequate provisions for the construction of proper drainage systems in Binikebi, Kogo, Bunza Federal Constituency, Kebi State, and the implementation of erosion control measures in the 2025 
budget estimates. I so move. Any second, Robo Mweke? Do you know the subject matter? You let us know the subject matter and second if you are in agreement. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it's directed, sir. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, my name is Honorable Mweke Felix Uche. I represent Elementai, Yubo uh, Federal Constituency uh, from River State. I rise to second the motion, heavily moved by my colleague. I so second. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. This motion is referred to committees on environment, works, and water resources for further legislative action. The 13th order of the day is a motion on the need to acquire adjoining pieces of land to expand federal medical centers, JIB, Ibitumeta, and the National Hospital, Abuja, standing in the name of Honorable Amos Gomna Magaji. Honorable Magaji is hereby invited to move the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. My name is Amos Gwamnamagaji. I represent the peaceful people of Zangon Kataf, Jaba Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, we are from Kaduna State. The need to acquire adjoining pieces of land to expand Federal Medical Center Jabi Ebuta Meta and National Hospital Abuja. The House notes that the Federal Medical Center Ebuta Meta began as a railway hospital in 1964 and later became an FMC in 2004 and still located in the Nigerian Railway Corporation compound in Ebuta Meta, Lagos. Also note that the hospital, Federal Medical Center Ebuta Meta, shares premises with an event center and printing press, which attract customer daily, disrupting hospital administration and causing inconvenience to patients, therefore necessitating urgent evacuation and acquisition of new premises for expansion. Further notes that Federal Medical Center Jabi, Abuja, is congested and challenged with meeting the growing demand of healthcare services for the teeming population of federal capital territory and its environs. Aware that a professional institute shares the same fence with the Federal Medical Center, Jabi, and was allocated large hectare of land for the building of its permanent site. However, the institute has not yet developed the land. Cognizant of the overriding public interest, therefore, relocating the institute land to the FMC JB for expansion will result to better and more effective healthcare service delivery. Informed that the National Hospital Abuja is in critical need of land to build its accident and emergency unit, hence the need to acquire the vacant land outside the hospital gate. Also cognizant that these proposed land acquisition and hospital expansion are critical for effective delivery of healthcare services to Nigerian citizens and for overriding public interest. Resolve to number one, urge the railway corporation, Federal Capital Territory Administration to approve this plot of land to the hospitals for the delivery, for the, for the desired expansion, and, initi and initiate a compensation procedure to the affected occupants. Two, mandate the Committee on Land Transport, Federal Capital Territory, Legislative Compliance, and Health, and Health Institution to ensure compliance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Any second? Honorable Tijani. Your Excellency, Mr. Speaker, highly respected colleagues, 
I remain Tijani Karade Ismail. I represent the good people of Ifeludum, Opa, or Infera constituency. I'm from Kora State. I rise to second the motion. Heavily moved by Honorable Amos Governor Mugabe. I so second. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. This motion is referred to the committees on land transport, federal capital territory administration, health institutions for further legislative action. The 14th order of the day is a motion on the need to address the secretive employment in the federal civil service. Standing in the name of Honorable Kola Ole Davison Akilayo. Uh, Honorable Akilayo is hereby invited to move the motion. I think, uh, Honorable, you have indicated that we should step down. This bill, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. This bill is stepped down by the leave of the House. Thank you, sir. The fifteenth order of the day is a motion on a on, the, on a call for relocation of independent National Electoral Commission INEC local government offices to neutral venues, standing in the name of Honorable Sondi Namchi. Honorable Namchi is hereby invited to move the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Honorable Professor Paul Sondi Namchi. Representing Enugu East, issues of federal constituency from Enugu State. Mr. Speaker, the, uh, on the motion is on the call for resolution, uh, relocation of local gov uh, independent and electoral commission, INEC local government offices to neutral venues or locations. Mr. Speaker, the House notes that the Section 157 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. 1999, as amended, guarantees the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, unhindered autonomy and independence to conduct elections. Also notes, the House also notes that the Independent National Electoral Commission has a critical role in conducting free, fair, and credible elections. The House further notes that the majority of the INEC's local government offices are currently situated within local government headquarters or otherwise. Further note that the majority, uh, further aware, the House is aware that this is potentially hampering and compromising the independence of INEC in the conduct of elections. The House observes that this proximity exposes INEC to manipulations and, and control by in, interest groups, particularly in areas dominated by a single political party. Concerned that this impedes INEC impartiality as enshrined in Section 6 of the Electoral Act 2022. Cognizance of the need to maintain public trust and confidence in the electoral process, the House resolves as follows to urge INEC to relocate its local government offices to secure, new, to secure neutral locations and make adequate provisions in the 2025 budget estimates to accommodate the projects. The, Secondly, they asked man to mandate the Committee on Electoral Matters to liaise with the Independent National Electoral Commission and other relevant stakeholders to ensure compliance and report within four weeks for further legislative action. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and so move. Honorable Blessing, can you tell us where we are and the second if you Amendment, are Mr. in agreement with this Amendment, motion? Amendment, Mr. Speaker. Speak up an amendment, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My name is Blessing Onyeche Onu, and I represent the very good people of Otupo in the federal constituency. I'm from Benue State. I rise to second this very important motion. Which is the motion? What motion is that? They call. <laughs> They call for relocation of Independence National Electoral Commission. I so second. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Mr. Speaker. Those against should say nay. That is our bit. This motion is uh, referred to the Committee on Electoral Matters for further legislative action. The 16th order of the day is a motion 
on funding of exploration for data in the solid mineral space to unlock mineral deposits and enhance foreign exchange earnings. Standing in the name of Honorable Ojo Sunde Makanjola. Honorable Ojo is hereby invited to move the motion. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, sir, and my Honorable colleagues. My name is Honorable Ojo Sunde Makanjola, Honorable Representing Ogoluwa. So, Larry Federal Constituency, I'm from Oyo State. The house notes. Um, I stand this afternoon to make a motion funding of exploration of data in the solid mineral space to unlock mineral deposits and enhance foreign exchange earnings. The house notes that the Nigeria is going through a difficult economy for us with dwindling foreign exchange, inflow of negative effects on Naira strength. As it was described in recent times as one of the worst performing in Africa alongside Ethiopia. Also note that the Nigeria has been a mono economy with high de dependency dependency on oil and gas. Now with, an, with the energy transition and departure from the use of fossil fuel, the country may begin to experience a decline in revenue from the sector. Further note that Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation Limited estimated $400 million on frontier exploration annually in Nigeria and in Nigeria and in 2021. NNPC spent two, 20 billion naira in seven months on frontier exploration alone. Aware that Nigeria is blessed with abundance resources and that during the colonial era and pre-independence period, Nigeria main income was solid minerals. The KPMG, Nigeria Mining Sector Brief, on June 2024, listed the potential of a number of minerals as follows. One, coal, as a reserve estimate of about 2.73 billion metric tons and proven reserve of 639 million tons. Two, bitumen, as an estimated 42.7 billion tons. Three, barite, as an estimated 23 million metric tons. Four, lead zinc, have been observed along a belt of approximately 30 to 50 kilometer wide stretching for about 560 kilometer in length from a Boeing state through Beni Bauchi, Adamawa, Taraba, Nasarawa, and Plateau State. Four, limestone, estimated reserve of 10.6 billion tons across, of, across 14 states. Six, iron ore as an estimated reserve of about 3 billion tons. Seven, gold, as estimate reserve of about 21.37 metric tons, valid at one billion dollars at as at second quarter of 2023. Conscious that this deposit of exploit to a bankable dat data level we bring an enormous foreign exchange inflow that we contribute significantly to our nation GDP. Resolve to urge the federal government to a appropriate the sum of $500 million or its equivalent for exploration as a special intervention in the solid mineral sector in the forthcoming 2025 budget estimate. Two, exploit bilateral agreement on a government to government level to get the required expertise as affordable rate for the exploration service and support technology transfer. 
Two, mandate the Committee on Appropriation, Finance, and Solid Mirror to ensure compliance and report within four weeks legislative week for further legislative action. I so move. Thank you. Any seconder? Chair, Internal Security, uh, National Security. Representing Chile Federal Constituency, Mr. Speaker, I rise to second this very important motion that will improve the economy of the mineral sector in Nigeria. I hear my second motion, sir. Thank you. Amendment? Okay, go ahead. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, my name is Mweke Felix Uche. I represent Eleme Oyibo by Federal Constituency and from River State. My amendment is on A, appropriate the sum of $500 million or its equivalent. How did he arrive at $500 million, sir? So, but, but then can you repeat what you said? My amendment is on A, appropriate the sum of $500 million or its equivalent for exploration as a special intervention fund. How did he arrive at $500 million? It is specific. So I will... I agree with you. So what, what, what will be the... The amendment should the be amendment. to make adequate provision for exploration to make, to make adequate provision. Adequate provision. Yes, Any seconder to this? Okay, honorable, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My distinguished colleagues, Olumide Oshoba, representing Abelkuta North, Obafemode, and Odra Federal Constituency, I'm from Ogun State. I have a rise to second the amendment as ably moved by my honorable colleague. Those in support of this amendment should say aye. Those against should say nay. There is a bit. Those in support of this motion as amended should say aye. Those again should say nay. There is a bit. This motion is referred to the committees on appropriation, finance, and solid minerals for further legislative action. The House Leader, can you move that uh, the House uh, suspend further deliberations on other items for tomorrow? Mr. Speaker, I rise to move that the House do suspend deliberations on other items on the other paper till tomorrow when we reconvene. I so move. Minority Leader, can you second, please? Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the motion that we do step down order 17 to 22 to tomorrow. I so second. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is of it. Leader, can you move for adjournment, please? Mr. Speaker, I rise to move that the House do adjourn to tomorrow, Thursday. Same time, same venue. I so move. Minority leader, please. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, I rise to second the motion that they have do stand adjourned. I so second. Those in support of this motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That is it. House adjourned to tomorrow, Thursday, 11 a.m. Thank you.